Hey there, thanks for tuning in to Duckworks. I'm Chris and welcome to another episode of Ninjago Retold, the show where I tell the entire history of LEGO Ninjago from the beginning to the end, aka from the pilots all the way to Crystallized. So far we have summed up the prologue, which I highly recommend you watch first, all the way up to episode 7, Skybound. But for episode 8, we have something a little bit different and a little bit special, because this time we are not covering any TV show, media, or specials. Instead, for this episode, we will be covering the Dark Island comic book trilogy. This is one of the only canon pieces of media for Ninjago that was not part of the TV shows themselves, and was the first in a planned series of trilogies that focused on different aspects of Ninjago's lore. The second, which was supposed to be focused around Skylar's family, but eventually was canned, unfortunately due to the poor sales of this Dark Island comic trilogy, which in turn means that not a lot of people really know what happened during the story. Now, the Dark Island trilogy actually got a shout out during the March of the Oni Season 10 special, where you actually could see a mural painted on the wall of the Ninjago Monastery of Spinjitsu, focusing on the events of this season, making it one of the most important pieces of Ninjago media that really ties up a lot of dangling plot threads, such as what happened to Klaus, what happened to Nautacon's pirate crew, and where did the ninja get all their vehicles for the Day of the Departed? And so, without further ado, let's jump up, kick back, whip around and spin, and roll that intro. Previously on Ninjago Retold, Terror of the Sky Pirates. When ancient Jin pirate Nauticon is released by ghostly sorcerer Klaus, he is unleashed upon Ninjago after 200 years imprisoned within that teapot of Tyran. Seeking revenge on the ninja for inadvertently destroying his home realm of Ninjago, sister realm of the preeminent, the vengeful Jin rescued his old comrades and terrorized the skies, using his sword of souls to individually ensnare each hero into his magical blade by taking advantage of their insecurities and fears, until only Jay and Nia remain. Reaffirming their relationship and trust in each other, the pair fought on, Nautacon seeking to marry Nia to gain unlimited wishes for himself, and Jay using lethal venom against the pirate captain. But, in a shot gone awry, Nia is killed by a shot meant for Nauticon, and as the ninja grieved the loss of their friend, Jay wished for time to be undone, turning back the clock to erase the events of the Jin incursion, leaving only himself and Nia remembering this tragic adventure. This is Ninjago Retold! You're a long way from finding a ninja in these parts, old man. Lord is the green ninja. I am the ultimate spinjitsu master! Support me, friends, for one last time. The new Serpentine War has just begun. My master has arrived. Yes, it's true. The greatest love stories do always end in tragedy. Maybe I'm departed. Control time. Control everything. I have no son. I cannot fight you, but I can resist you. Endings will always come. All we can do is fight to make them good ones. Remains! Protect those who cannot protect themselves. You were programmed by the game to lose, but you don't have to. I want you to promise me that you will always stand up to those who are cruel. We are the keepers of the amulet. I am. I am the sea. We are one. There will be peace in the dark. Episode 8, The Dark Island Trilogy. Chapter 1, Voyage into Darkness. All was right in the realm of Ninjago. The terror of Nauticon's release had been erased, Jay and Nia were closer than ever, and the ninja were popular heroes, renowned for their defeat of the preeminent and battle with the Ghost of Klaus in his gambit with the Yin Yang Dragon in the Realm of Shadows. 
but the Dark Sorcerer was determined to seize power, and after failing to acquire the Teapot of Tyran, Klaus set his sights on the mysterious Dark Island, Overlord's ancient home base still brimming with dark matter. Quickly realizing the limitless potential of the corruptive material, Klaus realized that if he could not summon Nautikon the Jinn, he could at least summon his pirate crew. Casting spells to rip open interdimensional gates in the Ethereal Divide, Klaus sought out and located the entirety of the crew of the Misfortune's Keep, Flintlock, Clancy, Dogshank, Monkey Wretch, Dabloon, and all the other pirates, all with no memories of their adventures in the Erased Timeline or their eventual alliance with the Ninja. Threatening to banish the crew again if they refused to obey him, Klaus put the pirate crew to work kidnapping fishermen on the outskirts of Ninjago, summoning a mighty workforce to work the mines on the Dark Island. As more and more hapless fishermen were caught in Klaus's net, the Dark Sorcerer's stockpile of dark matter grew and grew as he plotted to cast the realm into darkness, disrupt the balance, and complete the mission the Overlord had set out to do years ago, placing himself in control of this world of darkness. But Klaus's efforts did not go unnoticed. With reports spreading all across Ninjago of the disappearance of local fishermen, Misako set off to investigate the Dark Island, hiring bounty hunter Ronin to accompany her in her journeys. As the pair made landfall on the Island of Darkness and uncovered Klaus's dark designs, they set out to flee from the island and summon the ninja, only to be caught by the pirate crew in the midst of a deadly squall. Back in Ninjago, as Master Wu meditated on the ninja's recent victories and pondered what new threats may be on the horizon, he was interrupted by a group of villagers who brought him to the far western shores of Ninjago to uncover the wreckage of Misako and Ronin's boat, which had washed ashore and been left abandoned. Concerned that some dark fate had befell the old librarian and bounty hunter, Wu summoned the six ninja, Kai, Jay, Zane, Cole, Lloyd, and Nia, now masters of Spin Jitsu, Air Jitsu, and the Elements. Rushing forth from the Samurai X Cave in the Destiny's Bounty, the ninja reconvened with Wu, discovering a hidden message inscribed on Misako's boat, a warning of pirate gangs of old, and a message to stay away from the Dark Island at all costs. As the heroes loaded up the bounty and prepared to embark for the Dark Island, Wu loaded up a secret crate onto the vessel, an emergency failsafe only to be used in times of dire need. And with that, the ninja and their master set off for the island, flying into a massive storm belt. As raging winds shook the bounty and threatened to rip the flying ship apart, the ninja found themselves scattered in the storm, Jay and Nia reuniting with Erjitsu midair as Kai, Zane, Cole, and Lloyd were separated from the group, crash landing on the Dark Island as Wu remained with the bounty, refusing to abandon his secret cargo. And in a rippling explosion of wood and metal, the Destiny's bounty had its final flight, crashing on the shores of the Dark Island. Hours later, Kai awoke from the crash. Dazed and confused, the Ninja of Fire found himself marooned in the midst of an enormous desert, the Billy Badlands, with no supplies, food, or water. On the snow-capped peaks of the Dark Island, Zane awoke and stumbled upon Cole, who had also fallen among the mountains. Hurtling down through the dense jungles, Lloyd found himself in the underbelly of the island's forests. And as Wu went down with the bounty, Jay and Nia awoke on the shore of the island, reuniting as they both came to. As Master Wu regained consciousness in the jungles of the Dark Island, he encountered Lloyd as the Green Ninja fled from a group of unusually aggressive apes emanating with a purple glow. As Master and Student escaped the fists of these ferocious beasts, fighting through quicksand and making their way to the core wreckage of the bounty, Wu and Lloyd managed to work together to repair the vessel with raw materials. Despite the engines being busted, the bounty managed to work just fine as a normal ship, and in a matter of hours, the two set sail on the River of Darkness, bound for the Temple of Light. As they journeyed to the center of the island, Wu realized that something was wrong. Dark matter was all around them, infecting the earth, water, air, and wildlife of the Island of Darkness, and soon enough, it would begin to affect him and his pupils as well. Back on the island's coast, Jay and Nia noted the presence of spare parts scattered throughout the shore, realizing that they were not alone on the island, and somebody was building something. As they came across Flintlock and Dabloon, leading a group of pirates to detain a struggling fisherman, Jay and Nia were shocked to see their old crew members back in Ninjago, and immediately began to fear the worst, thinking that there was a chance that Nauticon may have returned. 
As Jay and Nia leapt into action, defeating the pirates and freeing their captive, Ronin burst forth from the jungle, explaining to the ninja that he had been separated from Misako, sent into the ocean, and shipwrecked on the island. In the days that passed, Ronin had managed to construct a salvage mech from spare parts, which he now used to help Jay and Nia battle an enraged leviathan influenced with dark matter, just as the monstrous creature attacked the group. As Ronin's mech scared off the glowing purple beast, Jay and Nia were even more mystified by what was going on, who was pulling the strings, and what other secrets the island had in store for them, as the trio set off into the jungle to find the rest of their team. Chapter 2 might of the Dark Matter. As Jay, Nia, and Ronin made their way to the center of the island, Lloyd and Wu were facing their own challenges as they sailed down the River of Darkness, beset by a swarm of bees infected by dark matter and driven into a frenzy. As the overwhelming presence of the Overlord's darkness surrounded Lloyd, he found himself consumed by rage, tapping into the Oni side of his blood as he hurled green fire at the insects, driving them off as his eyes glowed purple. Concerned over his pupil's heightened aggression, Master Wu attempted to calm Lloyd down to no avail, who was slowly spiraling into the dark, desperate to save his mother. Mind flooded with anger, Lloyd grew impatient and left Wu and the bounty, choosing to travel faster on foot to the Temple of Light, which Wu had suspected was the key to stopping the darkness. And, in the snow-covered mountain peaks, Zane had just managed to reunite with Cole as the two were attacked by a massive eagle, another creature driven mad by dark matter. As they hurtled towards a volcano, Cole and Zane managed to free themselves from the beast grip, finding themselves in the base of a mine operated by kidnapped fishermen and Misako. But before Cole and Zane could interfere, Lloyd burst forth from the trees, fully consumed by darkness as he lashed out the pirate gangs. Swiftly defeating the guards, Lloyd moved to journey deeper into the mines until he was stopped by his companions, who managed to snap him out of his trance. But, to their horror, Lloyd, Zane, and Cole realized that the civilians and even Misako had been fully turned by the dark matter due to their proximity to mining the substance. As Misako, fully under the influence of the evil substance, summoned Dogshang to attack the ninja, the three heroes worked to fend off the pirates, realizing that their elemental abilities had the power to cleanse the influence of dark matter. Freeing Misako from her trance, Lloyd directed his mother to help him free the rest of the prisoners while Cole and Zane sought out transportation. And as the ninjas of ice and earth ventured deeper into the mines, they came across the pirate Monkey Wretch, who revealed that he had created vehicles powered by dark matter after the ninja promised not to harm the rest of the pirates they had captured. Encountering a rugged tumbler and an all-terrain raider, Cole and Zane were able to reunite with Nia, Jay, and Ronin, who had made their way through the jungle and approached the mines. As the ninja boarded the new vehicles, they used their elemental power to cleanse the vehicles of darkness and run them on elemental energy instead, Zane commandeering this new titanium ninja tumbler and the others seizing the ultra stealth raider. As they drove off, the ninja picked up Misako and Lloyd, who loaded the rest of the freed prisoners onto their vehicles as a chase across the desert began, corrupted pirates in pursuit. Just as the five ninja managed to flee with the prisoners in tow, Flintlock proclaimed that this meager victory wouldn't last, and the pirate's new master would soon overwhelm them at the Temple of Light. Taking the rescued fishermen to the coast, the ninja assisted them in using the pirate vessels to sail back to Ninjago, ensuring that all former captives were safe before doubling back and racing deeper into the jungle, all converging on the Temple of Light. And, on the River of Darkness, Wu grew ever closer to his final destination. Plagued by the dark matter in the air all around him, the solitary Wu began to keep a journal, jotting down his thoughts as he tracked his sanity slowly slipping away, keeping the darkness within him at bay. As he journeyed along the river, a mosquito infected with dark matter bit Wu, sending the master into a feverish dream. Collapsing into a fit of sweat and hallucinating wildly, Wu was confronted by a dark version of himself, the representation of the latent Oni part of his blood. Goading the old master into the darkness, this corrupted vision tormented and taunted Wu, who remained steadfast in his journey, promising to fight through this hallucination and see the truth. But this dark mirror of Wu was persistent. Physical manifestation of Wu's doubts and insecurities, it began to taunt him, stating that all he had done, all the adventures his pupils had gone on, were battles that were Wu's responsibility to fight, not their own. His ninja weren't a gift to the world, they were but a gift to himself, and much like his father, the first Spinjitsu master, Wu was clearly willing to put others in harm's way before himself. 
As Wu repeatedly denounced his darker self, falling ill and collapsing on the deck of the bounty, the dark alternate stated that it had always been, and will always be, a part of Wu. And no matter what the old master did to push it away, this darkness, this selfishness, would always be a part of him. Falling deeper into the clutches of his inner demons, Wu's thoughts drifted to Misako, thinking of her smile, her fearlessness, how he had to resist the urge to run into her arms every time he saw her, and how he had asked her to join his team by telling himself it was a purely logical choice. But knowing deep down that every time he interacted with her, his emotions would cripple him. Racked with guilt over his decision to let Misako investigate the island, Wu began to succumb to fear, fighting himself in a battle of words and fists as he slowly came to the realization that the darkness may be a part of him. But it was his choice to reject this darkness, reject the worst parts of his thoughts, and in a final confrontation, Wu banished this demon from his mind. Collapsing on the ground and exhausted from this ordeal, Wu drifted off into a deep slumber hours turning to days as he recovered from this mental attack, until his boat finally drifted ashore in front of the mouth of an eerie cavern emanating with dark magic, his final destination. As the rest of the ninja made their way through the island, Monkey Wretch now sided with them to free his fellow pirates. They split the Ultra Stealth Raider into individual vehicles, separating to seek out Kai and Wu. As Cole flew off in the raider's jet, he realized his ghostly form granted him temporary resistance to the dark matter, and thus was the most unaffected among the ninja. And at the end of the river, Wu had reached his destination. Shaking off his visions and venturing into a dark cavern, the old master finally came face to face with dark sorcerer Klaus, who was behind all the recent events. As the ghostly wizard ensnared Wu in chains of dark energy, Wu demanded to know what his intentions were. To which, Klaus explained that after his failure to release the ancient Jin Nauticon, he sought to restore his full magical powers with the energies of dark matter. Forcing the pirate crew to work for him under duress, he now had amassed enough dark matter to assail the Temple of Light with countless amounts of the evil substance, in hopes to overwhelm and corrupt the structure. And, with the Temple of Light turned to a Temple of Shadow, both the Dark Island and Ninjago would be fully corrupted, the balance would be thrown to evil, and Klaus would be ruler of both land masses. Appalled by the Dark Sorcerer's plot, Wu warned Klaus that his actions could lead to the destruction of all 16 realms. But his warnings were ignored, as Klaus summoned the Misfortune's Keep in flying form, animated by his dark magic, to whisk him away to the Temple of Light, just as Wu broke free of his bonds. And minutes later, Cole arrived seconds too late, saving Wu but missing Klaus's escape. As Wu instructed Cole to locate Kai and restore the entire team, the Old Master pondered his impending destiny, and realized it was time to unlock his secret weapon, the cargo box he had brought to the island for the situation was more dire than ever. Chapter 3, Showdown at the Temple of Light While ninja battled pirates and Wu confronted Klaus, Kai had been stranded this entire time in the deserts of the Billy Badlands, lost and alone. Exhausted from his trek across these seemingly endless sand dunes, Kai was swiftly captured by a group of pirates piloting a raider bike and rock rotor, strung up in front of the desert buggy as a hood ornament as he slowly succumbed to the elements. But just as Kai was about to lose consciousness, Cole snuck into the pirate camp, using his ghostly abilities to scare off the villains, and finally saved Kai. As the two ninja interrogated the captured pirates, they learned of Klaus's dark plan to corrupt the Temple of Light, and realized they had no time to lose, commandeering the vehicles to hunt down the final trove of dark matter being transported in a convoy of dark vehicles, led by Klaus atop the Misfortune's Keep. As they raced alongside the convoy of trucks, battling gangs of pirates in modified vehicles and buggies, Cole and Kai found themselves backed up by the rest of the ninja, with the team finally united at last. Hurtling across the desert in their makeshift vehicles, the convoy of pirates defended the dark matter from the ninja, Kai attempting to attack Klaus directly with a tornado of spinjitsu, only to be blasted backwards by a burst of shadow, while Nia and Dogshank dueled once again, mirroring their rivalry in the alternate timeline. Remembering Dog Shang's sense of honor, Nia attempted to persuade the hulking brute to join their side and rebel against Klaus, but the warrior was already corrupted by dark matter and refused to hear reason. Frustrated by this assault, Klaus summoned a mighty sandstorm to give his vehicles cover, fleeing to the temple as the ninja were separated in the storm. 
As the six ninja pooled their elemental powers to break through the sandstorm, Wu continued to travel down the River of Darkness, more resolute than ever that it was his destiny to stop Klaus and realizing the importance of light and darkness. As the heroes arrived at the temple, they were too late to stop the Dark Wizard from pouring the last bits of dark matter into his machines of evil, bombarding the temple's defenses as the ancient structure was consumed by shadow. Empowered by the energies of the now corrupted temple, Klaus tapped into the darkest parts of his magical abilities to summon a shadow army, which assisted the corrupted pirates in beating back the ninja. As the Temple of Light was overcome by darkness, the balance between light and dark began to shift, earthquakes ripping apart chunks of Ninjago City, while tsunamis and hurricanes battered the civilians of Ninjago, the very fabric of the realm ripping itself apart due to this unnatural imbalance. As both halves of the island neared the embrace of total darkness, the ninja realized they had lost, and were beginning to lose hope just as Master Wu arrived, rallying his pupils and asking them to make one final stand to buy him some precious time. Redoubling their efforts to fight harder than ever before, the six ninja battled the Shadow Army while Misako and Wu opened their crate of secret cargo, revealing the golden mech of the first Spinjitsu Master inside. Salvaged from the final battle against the Stone Army and the Overlord years ago, this ancient fighting mechanism had been rebuilt by Cyrus Borg and stashed away for only the most dire of circumstances, and Wu leapt in the cockpit to pilot the powerful exosuit into battle. Bolstered by the power of light, Wu shattered through the barrier of darkness which surrounded the Temple of Light, confronting Klaus once and for all. Infuriated, the Dark Wizard used his powers of shadow to generate a mech of his own, a dark mirror of the golden mech, clashing with Wu as he proclaimed victory over the ninja and the forces of good, to which Wu used his moment of distraction to shatter Klaus's blade, lashing out in furious strokes as the dark sorcerer was beaten down. In a final clash, Wu managed to disperse the shadows, channeling the power of light through the golden mech to purify the temple. As Klaus watched his shadow army dissolve, he cursed Wu for interfering, realizing that a vortex had opened up directly beneath him that would slowly suck him to his fate. Enraged and driven mad by envy, Klaus refused Wu's attempts to show him mercy and help him, and stated that he would rather die than accept help from his enemy. And so, Klaus was consumed by the vortex, never to be seen again. For the Dark Wizard had been disgraced in battle, and, on his defeat, he fell to the underworld, surrounded by hostile Skulkin and doomed to forever rot in the depths of the Dark Realm. As light flooded over both islands, Ninjago and the Dark Island began to drift apart once more. Defeated, the corrupted pirate gangs were sent to Cryptarium Prison, regretting their role in the conflict yet scheming to break out at the nearest possible opportunity. As the ninja celebrated their victory, Wu concluded his journal, recounting a lesson his father had told him years ago. There must ultimately always be a balance between good and evil, and if the world fell into either darkness or light, it would lose meaning and purpose, for both the Temple of Light and the Oni Temple of Darkness on both halves of the island must remain intact for there to be a solid balance in Ninjago. And, with their adventures on the Dark Island over, the ninja returned to Nia Samurai X Cave, confident in their recent victories and now in command of powerful new vehicles created by Monkey Wretch. But as Wu retired to his bedchambers and began to sleep, nightmares clouded his mind as prophecies of the future assailed him. Statues in the Museum of History filled with more life than regular mannequins. Master Yang dwelling in the shadows of the floating Temple of Erjitsu. The former masters of fire and water, Rei and Maya, in a whirlwind of flame forging something terrible. And finally, the faces of the twins thought lost to time. Crux and Acronix, the hands of time. But that is a story for the future, and with that, we have summed up this episode of Ninjago Retold, the Dark Island Trilogy. Stay tuned in two weeks for the next episode, Day of the Departed. All right, and with that, we have summed up this latest episode of Ninjago Retold. Thank you all so much for watching this series, and I really do appreciate the support of this very long and time-consuming effort. Of course, let me know down in the comments below if you have any questions about the timeline or concerns. I definitely want to be able to answer as many questions as possible, so I will be checking the comments in case anyone is confused. Now, I also want to know, what do you think of the particular topics covered in this video? Did you like the season or the special that it covered? What do you think 
think of the storyline and media, and what are your favorite parts of what we just covered. With that, we've summed up this massive video, and thank you all so much for tuning in. Again, be sure to stay tuned every two weeks for a brand new Ninjago retold video coming very, very soon. Thanks so much, and bye for now.